Today on the podcast, I'm super excited to bring you the first writer ever to win three very important prizes in literature, the Newbery Award, the Kirkus Prize, and the Coretta Scott King Award for a single book. Would it surprise you to know that this first person to win all of these for one amazing book is a graphic novelist? That's right. Today we're talking to the creator of the New Kid series, which now includes New Kid, Class Act, and School Trip. This is a special episode designed to be played right to this author's favorite audience, students. So hey there, students. This one's for you. Find out why Jerry Craft loved comics as a kid, which superhero is his favorite, what it's like to create a graphic novel, and what exactly his epic graphic novel trilogy is all about. Well, welcome to the show, Jerry. I'm so honored that you're here. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. So today we've got an audience of students from all around the world. (laughs) Some of them probably already love comics and graphic novels, and some of them are maybe just discovering. So I'm going to try to ask the kinds of questions that I think they would be interested in. Are you ready? I'm ready. (laughs) Okay, great. Well, let's start by going back a bit. And I want to ask you, when you were a student... Which comic did you love the most, and why did you love it? You know, I bought anything with Spider-Man. and uh, So he had his own comic, which was The Amazing Spider-Man. He also had The Spectacular Spider-Man. And then he had Marvel Team-Up, where each issue he got to team up with another Marvel guy. So I was Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Oh, wow. And it and- was such a big series. You had so many options. Yeah, and I think a lot of it was because he was a teenager. And really with that secret identity, it was one of the toughest ones because as Peter Parker, he was kind of picked on even though he could literally beat anyone in the school at Mm -hmm. any time in anything. But he had to kind of pretend to be less than even though he knew that he had this great power. And that was always kind of an interesting thing uh, for me. Yeah, that's interesting. It keeps him relatable in some way. Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't have any real books that I thought were relatable. Mm. And so Peter Parker was probably, in a lot of ways, the most relatable character that I had as a kid. Yeah, that's so interesting. How did you... Um, start to get into drawing comics yourself. You loved comics growing up. You obviously read a ton of them. Did you start right away as a young kid to be drawing your own characters? You know, I always knew that I liked to draw. And I remember going to the movies when I was a kid and drawing stick figure versions of the movies Hmm. that I would see and send them to my brother who was stationed in Okinawa in the Marines. Oh, wow. And that was probably my first sequential art, you know, stuff in the sequence or fancy name for comic strips or comic books. Yeah. So, yeah, I think in a lot of ways that was my first. And then from there, it just expanded. And the more I did it, the better I got. The better I got, the more I did it. And I loved it. And, you know, to think that all these years later that I'm doing it professionally and, um, you know, being able to to talk to kids around the world is more than I could have ever imagined. That's so amazing. So you're basically creating like comic cliff notes of popular movies for your brother. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) How fun. Did you did you start to develop a character back then, like a character that you were always drawing in the margins of your notes at school? I was always a big Marvel guy, so it was a lot of those characters. Mm-hmm. And then in about, I would say the seventh grade, um, I probably started making up my own characters. Um, and that was anything from... Uh, in high school, like a Star Wars kind of spoof to, you know, just all kinds of characters, mainly 
Well, no, it was a combination of silly. Some were very silly and some were more heroic. Hmm. Do you feel like you can look back and see kind of an arc from then to your trilogy, the New Kid trilogy? Yeah, in a lot of ways, because it was always um, fun and funny. You know, it was never really super serious. Yeah. And even the serious moments had some parts that you could still laugh at, Mm -hmm. you know. So Mm -hmm. I think the humor is kind of what sets my books apart while still being able to have some serious conversations, both in the book and uh, after the, the after you read the book as um, as a reader. Yeah, this seems like a good time for you to just introduce those books a little bit for anybody listening who hasn't read them quite yet. Yeah, so it all started with the first book, which was New Kid, which mm-hmm. came out February fifth, twenty nineteen. And it is the story of Jordan Banks, who is 12 years old. He has always been one of the youngest and the smallest kids in his class. Uh, He wants to go to art school because, like me, he loves to draw. And his mom and dad don't want him to be to art school, don't want him to go to art school. Like my parents did not want me to go to art school because Mm -hmm. they didn't think it was a real job. So they sent him to a private school in Riverdale, as did my parents. And now he is uh, the new kid in the new school and trying to, you know, see different things for the first time. Things like race and class and, you know, socioeconomic and just a bunch of different kinds of things that he's really exposed to for the first time. Um, The companion book Class Act came out October 5th, 2020. And that is the eighth grade year. And this one focuses a little bit more on Jordan's friends, Liam and Drew, and their relationship to each other. And just the idea of, you know, really seeing the kinds of kids that they are and how they're similar, but how vastly different they can be. And can kids who are that different really be friends? So that's the big thing there. Yeah. And then in School Trip, which came out April 5th of this year, it is the three of them, Jordan, Drew, and Liam, and their classmates going to Paris, France for a week. And now it's kind of funny because they're all the new kids as they try to, you know, uh, navigate a new culture and new food and new music and a new language. And so they're all kind of starting from scratch at the same place. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I I confess that I haven't been able to get school trip yet because I'm living overseas myself. And so I can't get it at the store oh. until I get back to the US, but I'm particularly looking forward to it because I've been traveling with my own middle school son as he's been kind of having similar experiences in new places. Got it. <laughs> um I wanted to ask you When you're creating one of these books, what is your process like? You know, it really varies. I think one of the things that I'm successful at is doing what I am capable when I feel like it. Mm. So what I mean by that is sometimes I will wake up and I just want to draw all day and every line that comes off my pencil or in my case, my uh, my tablet, you know, my um, I use a Wacom tablet. And um, every line that comes off is just like, oh, this is great. I, I love it. <laughs> and then there are days where it does not happen that way. It's like, <laughs> oh, this, I just do not have it today, you know? Yeah. And um, those are days that I will do something else. I will do some research or I will write more or I will figure out how a character is dressed or, you know, what their favorite food is. So I'm always doing something, but it's not always 
what I um, set out that day. You know, it's just like in, in sports. There are days when you it feels like you shoot and everything you uh, – every ball you hit is a home run and every basket is a three-pointer. And then there are days when you just do not have it. <laughs> um, so some days I will just not do anything and I'll rest and enjoy myself. And like I said, all the days I'll just refocus and do something else. Yeah. Yeah. That's so lovely to be able to lean into where you're feeling good. <laughs> do you find that there's a part of graphic novel creation that you tend to lean toward the most, like the part that you prefer writing or drawing? You know, it really surprises me how equal they are because for years, I only considered myself an artist mm -hmm. because I didn't like to read as a kid. So I thought if I wasn't a reader, how could I be a writer? Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of really a big deal. So I never thought, uh, and it's so funny that the awards that I've won have been for writing. So like New Kid winning the Newbery yeah. uh, Medal is as a writer because Caldecott is for illustration. Right. The Coretta Scott King Author Award says it in its name, author. Yeah. And in the Kirkus Prize. So they weren't for art. So if you would have told me that I would have won three of the largest awards in children's book history, and none of them would be for drawing, they'd all be for writing, I would have really thought that you were talking about somebody else. <laughs> That's amazing. As you tell a story, like as you're sitting down to tell the story, do you find that you write out the plot first and then start to express its details in the drawing? Or does it just do they just both come to you at the same time? Yeah, once again, it depends on my day and yeah. my mood. Um with New Kid and Class Act, I kind of sketched them out and did like little thumbnail sketches um, to kind of write it that way yeah. um, and draw it simultaneously. And then with School Trip, I feel like I had so many little things that I had to make sure that I answered because it, in theory, is the final of the New Kid saga, you know? Right, right. The third in the trilogy. Right. So I was like, well, I needed to really make sure that I was able to answer all the questions because the last thing that I would ever want is for a kid to come to me and go, well, what happened to so-and-so? <laughs> no, like, I was really looking forward to that and you didn't answer it. And then I just have to be like, well, <laughs> you know, book four. Like, right, sorry about that. <laughs> so with with um, school trip, I did not want that to happen. So I really made sure that I, in this case, wrote everything out as a script, and then went back and forth over and over again, and like, okay, now did I wrap it up with this character? Okay, what about Maury? What am I going to do with him? What am I going to do with Ramon? What am I going to do with this one? And then when I had it, I went and um, started sketching it. The only bad thing was that I didn't really know how many pages it was going to be that way. Mm. So I ended up maybe having to cut 20 pages because I went a little long because I'm supposed to come in around 250 pages. You know, for each of the three books. And I think that one would have been about 270. Um, so I'm starting a brand new series now. And mm -hmm. right now I'm also writing it out. Uh, but I think I will start to sketch it out soon just to see about how many pages I have. Yeah. So that I don't do the same thing and have to cut like 50 pages. Oh my gosh, that must be really tough. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give us any hints about this new series or is that totally top secret? 
That is totally, totally top secret. <laughs> I figured, but I had to yeah. ask. But all new characters, all new setting. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because, you know, I am looking at what, uh, and I don't want to turn it on you and stick you, <laughs> but I'll, I'll just say this rhetorically. Yeah. Um, like, what do people think is a Jerry Craft book? Uh, you know, yeah. like, I think it is middle grade. Yeah. It is pretty wholesome. Yes. Um, it's funny. There's Relatable. friends and family. And there may be some stuff that happens, but... It's never going to be, you know, the the house burns down and yeah, it's, you know what I mean. Like it feels like real life for kids, right? You know? Real yeah. life, but not any of the things that will ruin a kid's day, you know. Because I know, you know, these kids get into characters, um, and again, I wish I did as a kid, but I just never saw that. You know? Yeah. And so watching my two sons, how much they were into what they saw with Percy Jackson and Greg Hefley mm-hmm. or But Not Buddy and, and really like, man, you know, and even when I was writing New Kid, there were things that I, when they sh- uh, saw the sketches, were like really upset with me. <laughs> oh, no. You know, for like, why did you do that to Drew? Or why did you do this, Dad? Mm. And then I was like, oh, okay. So certain things I had to change because, you know, if if they were upset by it, um, then I'm assuming that other kids would be upset. And, you know, I can't buy everyone an Xbox to forgive me. <laughs> you know? I, so, you know, I, I thought that that was very interesting you know so kids my readers um opinions really do matter yeah you know and as i had done more and more school visits and had kids over the years come to me like mr craft why isn't there a kid from india in your book i'm like oh i don't know i just i didn't think of it (laughs) Oh, what's your name? My name is Malaika. Okay, well, I'll put a kid from India named Malaika in the next book. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just one of those things where um, kids just want to be seen. Yeah. And when I realized just what was on my shoulders, you know, of what kids expected from me, um, you know, there was a lot of, there was a, just a lot to it, you know? Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, in the sense of just not wanting to ever um, disappoint my readers. Yeah. You know? Well, you're writing great books for them, and you're not done. <laughs> no, I'm not done by quite a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to my question. After kids burn through the new kid trilogy and love it, and while they're waiting for your next book, what other graphic novels and comics do you think they should read? Oh, boy, there's so many good ones now. Um, so, you know, obviously, Raina Telgemeier is mm. at the top of her game. She, She's you know, great. I owe so much to her for making um just the, the whole graphic novel um middle grade graphic novel um format you know just taking it to the next level yeah. the way that she did um for a little bit more mature kids Jerrica Shaska Hey Kiddo and Sunshine they're really great mm-hmm. uh Dan Santat's um uh, he has a, a his new graphic novel is also about kids going to um, Europe. Oh wow! Um, yeah, which is pretty cool. 
and um, I think First Time for Everything is called uh, Maria Scrivan uh, has a, a, a great series um, and um, my friend Terry Liebeson uh, has a great series it's like Tyler and like it's, it's got all these names. I keep saying where when is just Jerry coming out? Originally <laughs> it was you know Invisible Emmy. Um, so you know there's just so much Leon, The Invincible by Jamar Nicholas, Swim Team. Yes. Um, yeah, it's just a really good time now. I think to be a kid reader, you know, yeah. and then of course the Amulet series. Uh, by Kazu Kibuishi and you know the stuff that Jean Yang does. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just a really good time with a lot to recommend. Picture book wise, Eric Velasquez, my favorite book of his is called Octopus Stew. Uh, mm-hmm. it's a really funny, really well done picture book. Um, and then you know Kwame Alexander, mm-hmm. he's not he's not bad, you know. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, that's a great list. I'm going to uh, link them all up in the show notes so that that people can explore them alongside New Kid. Jerry, thank you so much for taking the time to go on. I know that students listening and teachers listening are going to want to go and learn more about you and what you're writing now and what you've been writing. Where should they go? Well, you know what's so funny is I've there were things that I wish that I had as a kid that I've done. I've created like a new kid sketchbook for kids like me that are always drawing oh, and cool. a new kid jigsaw puzzle. And, you know, just little things that uh, kids who like myself, who never saw themselves on like a jigsaw puzzle or in a sketchbook or things like that. Um, but on my website, which is just jerrycraft.com. Uh, you get to see when I do school visits. I try to update it, but even that gets a little overwhelming at times. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and then throughout social media, you know, I, I post when I do school visits and things like that. So, you know, right. I try to interact with my fans as much as humanly possible. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, thank you again so much. Thanks so much for joining us today. To learn more about Jerry Craft and his books, check out his website, look up one of the books at your library, or watch the trailers linked by QR on the sketch notes sheet your teacher hopefully grabbed from today's show notes. Then maybe you'll want to go start creating characters of your own and telling the stories you wish were out there in the world like Jerry does.